Alrighty, welcome back. We're doing a four on four. The five on five was fun, but it was a little wild. And we've got a nice challenge set up. We've got myself, Fearbina, BK, and Mac, the dream team, battling against Sam Rolf, Oliver Tomiko, Nathan Stoyer, and Stefan, a mental misstep. So we've got a Mox Emerald. Love to see that. First pick in Mox Emerald, and I am passing to Stefan. And. Someone just changed their name here. I don't even know who that is. That must be Nathan, I guess. Uh, in any case, I'm taking Mox Emerald. <laughs> Nathan's passing to me. And yeah, he changed it back. And Stefan's gonna or gotta take Scalding Tarn, which leaves Anton to take Mishra's Bobble, or no, probably Ancient Tomb. I don't know. But in any case, I'm gonna start with the Mox. And second pick here. Luminarch Aspirant's excellent. Chain Lightning's pretty good. Atali is good, but I don't really want to take Atali here. Despite it being a green mox, I don't really want to take Briarbridge. Taking Leobold or Uro this early, I think, is crazy. You know, I think it might be right to take Luminarch Aspirant here. Um, Bitter Triumph is good. Atali's good. Chain Lightning's good. But Luminarch really uses this mox well. And look, I, I swear I don't just force white aggro here, but... I just try to draft what's good, and I think Luminarch is the best pick here. Plus, Nate inf pretty infrequently plays white, so I think I'll take that, but I'll see where things go. Oh, he finally passed a Demonic Consultation. He, he drafted this deck, uh, this card a bunch when we first added it. Though, I do like the card. It's good with Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, and Thassa's Oracle. But here, I'd probably just take Othari. Othari is a good card. It's not like the Nuts, but I think it's enough better than Wandering Emperor which is kind of my second pick here that I should take it. There's also Asika's Chariot, because I have a green mox. But I think red white is generally better than white green, so I think I should just take Othari here. Yeah, I'll probably take Figure of Destiny now. I like Lauren. I think it's good, but I love Figure of Destiny. There's also tons of great threes. There's Blade Splicer, Flicker Wisp, Skycleave Apparition, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Lelia, Death Greeter Champion, like... Even, and even if you look at just white, like Blade Splicer, Flicker Wisp, Skyclave is already like, and Steel Seraph, there's just tons of threes, and this is one of the better ones. Passing a Duress to go with Stefan Scalding Tarn and whatever else, but I think this is Figure of Destiny. I hope Nathan isn't kind of tricking me with passing Othari into something, but, you know, if he is, he is. All right, well, there's Breeding Pool and Skydiver, some good blue and green cards. I'm going to take Samwise here. I do like a Samwise. I like Hero of Bladehold too. It is pretty good with Mox, but I kind of feel like Samwise is awesome and, and Bladehold's a little bit more expensive. Also a Dragon's Rage Channeler, but I'd rather just take a white card. Still, all right, let's go Samwise here. Ooh, this is kind of a nice pickup. And no, I actually don't mean Chandra. I mean Sacred Foundry. Getting a red-white duel, like specifically a Plateau or Sacred Foundry, makes fetch lands great, is the perfect mana source. Like... I think this makes me more likely to take red cards than Chandra. Like, I just can't take a double red card with no fixing, but Sacred Foundry is perfect. Passing a Chandra and a bunch of just Naya colored cards, which is awesome for me. There is a late troll and subtlety, but if Nathan's cutting red white, which I don't think he is at this point, uh, he's not He's not doing a great job. I'm getting a bunch of great cards here. So I think he's most likely playing blue, because he usually is. Um... Though he's passing Spun Stunt Double Spell Seeker. This is good news too. It means, well, it's good and bad. It just means of the last four or five people, none of, none of them open Time Walk or Ancestral. I'm going to take Intrepid Adversary. If I had a Lurus, I would obviously just take Bobble, but Intrepid Adversary is a pretty good card, so I'm happy enough to take that there. And I haven't really picked a second color, but ooh, I'm going to take Carnage Interpreter. I think this card is really, really good. I don't want to pass it. I like it even more than Inspiring Vantage and not only can I pick up more red-white fixing, it also makes white-black fixing into relevant mana fixing for Interpreter. I think it's just too good in the style of deck to pass, even though it does hurt to pass an Inspiring Vantage here. And then next pick, well, there's my three drop. I think Steel Seraph is pretty great. So I'm going to take it over Arc Trail. I do like Arc Trail, but this kind of does the same thing for me. It just flies over their blockers. Passing Stefan, Archfiend, Arc Trail, Evolve Sleeper, whatever he's into there. Like here, I actually think I'm going to take Concealed Courtyard because that can help cast Carnage Interpreter. I don't think I'm going to put Sunfall in my deck. 
nor do I think passing it's going to be that devastating. And I think it's more likely that Stefan takes one of these other cards anyway. Though I guess the Sunfall could go then past Anton back over to Sam Rolf, but you know, whatever. I just think casting this card early is going to be really strong. Here, I could take Dark Confidant because I could also be black white. And I like that more than the other black cards. And it's kind of a hate pick if Stefan's playing a good black deck. All right, I'll take Dark Confidant. I don't think I care too much about Elish Norn. Brotherhood's End will be good against me, but I'm I'm okay passing it. And as long as we note that Stefan has it, that can reduce the impact a little bit at least. All right, then I'll take a Jetmere's Garden. A tapped red-white land is fine. Now I have two green sources for free. I have the Jetmere's Garden and the, the Mox. No spells. All right, well, definitely check Triumph. Triumph I like as a sideboard card. There's some mashups where it's really good. I, I typically don't main deck it in the aggressive versions of decks, and I think Pick Your Poison is better than Haywire Might. They're both cards I could consider siding in. All right. Uh, well, this was a pretty good pack one. I feel good about my position, and I feel good about the power level of cards, and good about opening gut gut is just really good i like caracas too and i like lutri though i've actually come down on lutri a little bit i kind of feel like lutri is slow enough that i'm not like this was in my top 50 i'll have to have to redo that one in a, in a couple weeks here but uh i would bump it down from where i where i had it before i'm happy enough to take gut i'm passing nathan the lutri he's probably going to take it the rest of this pack's kind of bad but it's okay. Gut is a great first pick, and it's so disgusting with Carnage Interpreter. If you can follow up Interpreter with Gut, it's just unreal. But yeah, I'll take Gut here. And pretty much going to be red-white. I'm going to put this Dark Confidant in the sideboard for now. You never know, though. It really just depends on fixing. You know, if this was like a Savai Triome and I got a Fetch Land, I could see could see getting a little, you know, get a little ambitious on our colors. But for right now, we're red-white with two red-white duels and then a black-white duel, which helps cast the Interpreter. That's a totally fine place to be. Hopefully Stefan will hook us up. Oh, he did. Mox Diamond. I like Mox Diamond over Chrome Mox. It adds any color, which is great, and it uh, let, requires you to discard a land instead of a spell, which is kind of nice. Um, passing a Chrome Mox, I think that's probably what Nathan takes, unless he really has a... Unless he's playing green, which I don't think he is. No, that those last picks had so many green cards. Stefan's probably also playing blue here, but I'm, I'm just going to take Mox Diamond. Pass Chrome Mox, Noise Marine. Yeah, a bunch of other cards I'm not that interested in playing. And, you know, the old Zero Spells deck. That's all good. Okay, so this pack has Steam Vents, Dreadhorde Arcanist, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Breach, and World Spine. Wow, this actually has zero playables for me. Uh, okay, there's no card I'm going to put in my deck. And I don't think I could even see a, a, a way that Dreadhorde Arcanist gets in. I might just take Steam Vents because it's a good card. Like, both Jace and Narset are close enough together that I don't really care about passing Nathan those two. I actually think Steam Vents is a reasonable card to hate, and I think there's a chance that I could actually play it depending on where this goes. Like, if I open a Time Walk or something, it's always nice to have a Steam Vents. And then here there's a Snapcaster I don't love passing, but I'm going to take Elite Spellbinder. That's another three. See, so many threes. And I don't really want... I, I think Urbrask's Forge actually has been kind of nice in, in the right matchups, but I'm going to take Spellbinder. Maybe Stefan's not playing blue. There's Snapcaster and Lorraine Revealed. Last pack had Jason Narset. It's possible he's playing red. Not very likely that he's playing white at this point, but let's take the Spellbinder. Wheel of Fortune. Oh, I do love Wasteland in these decks. Verdant is interesting. Verdant gets Jetmere's Garden. Or I could just take Wasteland because Wasteland is kind of busted in these decks. I think I'll just take Wasteland. I, I don't really want Wheel of Fortune in my deck, and I think Wasteland's pretty good. Oh, man, late days, too. Uh, there's a Firebolt, and I need some interaction. So there's all these lands that don't do much for me. I'm passing Nathan a late Brain Freeze. That's got to be something to keep track of. I have a lot of weird lands. I think I'm just going to take Firebolt, though. Yeah, Firebolt looks good here. The artifact lands are kind of nice with a gut. You can actually sack an artifact, uh, and that, that counts. So passing a late daze and a late brain freeze and some decent lands. Maybe Stefan's playing white, but that would be great for me. It means that it means this pack has kind of sucked, but pack three is going to be bad for him, and pack one's going to be bad for him, if that's the case. I don't know, though. We'll have to see. And here, ugh, I could hate a Thopter Foundry. I could take a Godless Shrine as just another way to play... 
Carnage Interpreter, and it also, at that point, I can probably get the uh, Dark Confidant in. Maybe the Verdant would have been a nice pickup, as it turns out. Well, I did need something to fight with. Some giant Eldrazi here, too. There's also Cauldra Complete in case I get a Stoneforge, but I think I'm just going to take Godless Shrine here. I think that works out. Oh, wow. Whoever took Demonic Consultation shipped back Oracle. Okay. This looks like a great Sarah Paragon deck. I even have Wasteland. I have Mox Diamond. Good cheap creatures. I think I like that over Shatter Skull Smashing. And nothing good came back. I guess I'll just hate the blue card and pass all the green cards. <laughs> well, BK likes green. Hopefully BK is getting hooked up here. And then this pack has Monastery Mentor, but this is such a bad mentor deck. There's Spara's Headquarters, but that doesn't do much for me. Honestly, I could take Bayou. Just, do I care about passing Drown in the Lock? I don't really. I'll take a Bayou. I don't know. I, I feel like I could be some weird multicolor deck. I guess here, I'm really not playing any of these cards. I feel like Nathan loves Flash. I'll just hit the World Spine Worm. Okay, well, I'm gonna not going to pass this late of a Lorien Revealed. Even Urbask's Forge does look good in this deck, but uh, Lorien Revealed is so good. Though with two Moxes, no, I have enough threes. I'm just going to take the Lorien Revealed. I, I'm not going to be short on playables here. Do I want Silent Clearing? I don't really, though. No, I, I'm fine passing a late Teferi. I won't pass a late Meticulous Archive, though. I have so many lands. All right, let's put Dark Confront in. At this point, Dark Confront's definitely getting in. All right, last pick, Sail into the West, huh? Okay, Wild Packs here. And <laughs> I opened the Stone Forge, but it's okay. I, I think I want to take a Marsh Flats. Marsh Flats gets, it's a red, white, black land, which is all that matters here. I've got a bunch of other five color lands in the sideboard. We've seen Sign of Draco. We haven't seen Territorial Kavu. It's not zero that I could play that. It's also Glimmerlands. I do like Glimmerlands, but I feel like I should just take Marsh Flats and like Sir Ginger or Glimmerlands might wheel. A lot of lands in this pack. Definitely not the strongest pack. Oh, well, here's the Flash. <laughs> I have the World Spine, <laughs> but I don't have any tutors, so that's not really great for me. Wow, there's a Reanimate, a Windswept Teeth. Underman Adventure probably is playable now. I have Bayou, yeah, because look, I have Mox Emerald, Mox Diamond, Jetmere's Gardens, Marsh Flats, and that gets by you. Yeah, I'm in for Undermountain and then maybe Wheel, Flicker Wisp, or Rod is Firebrand. Pass a Flash that I know Stefan can't use. I am passing a Reanimate. That's the other card. I could just take Reanimate. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Would I wa which one would be better for me and which one do I care about passing? I don't really want to pass either of them, of course. You know, they're both really good for me. I think Undermountain's a little better for me. I think I'm going to take Undermountain because I'm passing Flash and Reanimate, so whichever one of those is better, they can take. I think I'll take Path to Exile. This deck really desperately needs a little bit of interaction. I don't even mind the Firebolt over Verdant pick. Though I would have switched that now knowing where I am, but I think Path has got to be critical here. So I'm going to take Path. Okay, now there's a Workshop and a Retrofitter, but I'll take Tithe Taker. This looks like a pretty good Tithe Taker deck, and if Tribal Flames comes back, I'm interested. I could also, now I really wish I took Marsh Flats, or Verdant, I could also take Deathrite Shaman, but I think I'm happy enough with Tithe Taker. I also have two Moxes, so I'm not too worried. So I have one Fetch and a bunch of Fetchables and a couple non-Fetchables. And I don't even have that much in the way of red. Yeah, a Verdant pick is haunting me. But right now, I need a couple more playables. I have four picks in. Yeah, I'll, I'll be able to pick those up. I'm not too worried. I've only got three red cards in my deck and one black card. Ooh, this one I like. Four mana, one five. When it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. And whenever this becomes blocked, they lose five life. So I'll take that over Cathar Commando and Lingering Souls. And now my now my mana is 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 kind of like taking all those lands did help, though. Could have had one more. I don't have any blue cards. I do have the Steam Vents. <laughs> Pick Your Poison, also a great card. If I have the mana base for it, I might play that one too. All right, here. Okay, now there's a bunch of blue cards. True Name, Chrome Host, Tidebinder. I guess I'll let those go through. The question is, do I want Adanto Vanguard or a War? I think I got to take a Crowan War. I've got a good amount of twos, and I'm a little short on interaction, so a Crowan War, I think, fits really nicely into what I'm doing. 
And my curve isn't that high. I've got three fours, but I can figure something out. Okay, here, this actually could be a Leyline Binding deck. <laughs> it makes my Bob a bit worse, but it's going to cost two mana most of the time. And sometimes I'll even, I'll just put in a Steam Vents or something, especially if that Tribal Flames wheels. And then, one, two, so this is four. Well, I'm going to get a last card. If it's not Bolus of Citadel, I guess it could be Student of Warfare, Bloodthirsty Adversary. I don't know. But I think Leyline Binding's good for me. I like Probe a lot. I don't think we're in Delighted Halfling territory. We're not going to have that much green mana. Tundra just helps with the Tribal or the Domain stuff, the Leyline Binding, and maybe the Tribal Flames if it comes back. We're not getting Territorial Kavu at this point. We know that. I don't care about... I'm not going to play Deluge. I'm not going to play Malcolm. Do I want Probe or do I want Tundra? Probe is pretty good. Let's just take the Probe. Okay, and now Glimmerlands wield. So did Sir Ginger. So did Pyromancer. Well, we're not a Pyromancer deck. I think I'll just take Glimmerlands. It's pretty good. I don't think I need Indotha Triome. Glimmerlands also really sick with gut. So let's just do that. And it's just a good card. Okay, Flash wield. So did the Rada's Firebrand. <laughs> I could take Flash and just have Flash Worm in my deck, but again, without any tutors, I don't think that that's a very good strategy. Whereas the Firebrand actually seems pretty good. And I'm and I'm domaining here. All right. Rod is Firebrand. Raugrin Triome came back. Um, it's a red-white land. Yeah, that's fine. It makes makes Domain a little better if I... I don't think I'm going to play Malevolent Hermit. I don't care too much about passing it, so... Now now I would definitely Tribal Flames. This is funny. Ended up Mono-White Domain. <laughs> Let's see if... Uh, Pax cooperate here. If I can get, like, one more wheel... I'm not really waiting on too much. I, I guess I would definitely play Tribal Flames. And at this point, the Leyline Binding, I think, looks pretty good. Bob got a little worse with the addition of Leyline Binding, I will say that. But with all these mocks in, I think it's pretty good. Uh, very last time, the Verdant Catacomb pick haunts me. But I think Firebolt will be good in this deck. And at the time, I think it made sense. I, I don't recall anything else super big to come, come back, coming back around. I'm not going to Zerda. I'm not going to Urborg. I could Spell Queller. I mean, I'm going to take it. I don't know if I'm going to play it or not. I have Steam Vents and Meticulous Archive if I really want to. I also have a Pick Your Poison in the sideboard here. I'll look at my mana. The Bayou is kind of nice. Because right, I mean, right now I have like five green sources. That's not so bad. I mean, I can't imagine I'm picking much else up here. Um, I'm not going to play the Talisman. I'm not going to play Misfall Bridge. I guess I'll just hate the Sahili. I'll hate the Regisaur. I don't really want to play the, a green-white tap land that doesn't have types. And I got the last pick, Bolsa Citadel. All right, no Tribal Flames for me, but I, I kind of think I like how this went, turned out. All right, so this is 34... 10 lands, which means we'd be at 16 lands plus Mox Emerald is 17 lands. Mox Diamond, pretty reasonable though. <laughs> I have a Rotting Regisaur in, which might be a bit of a stretch. It's just be just be for for uh, for keyword big. There's also Meticulous Archive. I can't really justify Lorraine Revealed. It gets Steam Vents and Meticulous Archive, so it technically gets red and white. <laughs> but I don't know. It's pretty hard to cast in this deck. So mana-wise, what are we what are we looking at here? So right now I have Marsh Flats, so Bayou, Jet Mirrors. So this is five green sources. So a force to be six. I think I might just cut Regisaur for pick your poison then, just for one more piece of interaction. So this is six green sources, plus you do kind of have to factor in that Battle Rager can go get a green. <laughs> Undermountain can technically go get a green, but uh, that's not really helpful. Okay. I don't mind going one over on lands when I have Wasteland and two Cycling Lands. And then, oh, and a Silent Clearing. So yeah, that's totally fine. If I wanted to do that, I don't know if I want to cut a card for another land. And black sources will have, let's see, four, five, six, 
seven with a swamp, and that's for Dark Confidant and Battle Rager and in helping to cast Carnage Interpreter. Okay, that's not too bad. No islands, and then if I play a mountain, I end up with... Oh, this is a pretty good amount here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I could play one more mountain and have eight, and then that leaves me room for two planes, and the two planes gets me to... Pretty good. I think this is going to be like nine white sources. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten white. I actually feel like my mana is pretty good given the circumstances. Mm. There's nothing else I really want to play. I don't want to play another tap land, so I'm not going to do that. I don't think I want to play a Lorien Revealed. It's also kind of bad with <laughs> Bob. And. I think I like Pick Your Poison. All right, I think I got a deck here. This is this is solid. You know, I think another fetch land may, maybe would help it, maybe. <laughs> but here's where we're at. All right, so BK's on a Mox Sapphire, Mana Vault, extremely BK deck. He's got Green Sun Zenith. He's got a bunch of Mana Dorks, Upheaval, some Nissas, <clears throat> Aragorn, Leovold. Aragorn and Leovold fighting side by side. I like it. You know, Elves and Aragorn, they're their buddies. This deck looks pretty sweet. <clears throat> Got a bunch of fetches and stuff. It has the risk of flooding, as these decks always do. He does have swords, DT. He has some powerful stuff, so looks like a bit do-nothing, but you know what? I, I bet this deck could have some awesome draws. Mac has just bread and butter, mono white, no power, Elvish Spirit Guide, but he's got Stoneforge plus Cauldra. Parallax Wave, Hero of Blade Hold, Season Dungeoneer plus WPA, so kind of has power. Gemstone Caverns. This deck looks very solid. And Anton's a pretty solid Tinker deck with Tinker Portal, Triplicate Titan, Feywild Caretaker, some good blue spells. No Academy and isn't running Misha's Workshop at the moment, though I'm trying to convince them that Coveted Jewel, Walking Ballista, some Talismans is enough. I don't know. We'll see. All right. I don't love our setup. I think he's got an Ancestral, at least. We have... It's not like we have a, you know, no power or whatever. We have two moxes and an ancestral combined, which is which is okay, but not amazing considering the the spread of cards. But mostly it's that Oliver has a sick reanimate deck because Mac passed in tomb and mana vault, and Oliver took in tomb and ended up with good reanimate deck. I'm also partially main decking my dark confidant, even though this deck's actually got a pretty high CMC now. We're playing again. I think we have two white decks and a green deck, and they have a bunch of combo ish blue decks and black decks. So that's the theory, at least. But uh, let's get to it and see how it does. All right. I'm on the play. This deck can have some really gnarly sample hands. But this is actually a solid one. I need to draw lands here because I'm basically keeping a two lander with some exp expensive cards in hand. But <clears throat> on the play, turn two Luminarch is pretty nice. I have Firebolt. He molded six. And uh, if I draw lands and I can get to Vicious Battle Rager, that'll be awesome. Forest go. Oh, I do Dark Confidant. Against Forest especially. Easy slam of Dark Confidant. Hopefully it doesn't kill it because I really need it to draw my lands. Ooh, no plays. And I hit some lands. I hit Bayou. All right, let's go Bayou. Luminarch here. He didn't kill Dark Confidant last turn, so I'm just going to put the counter on the Dark Confidant. Smash for three. I feel pretty good about this now, because <clears throat> now I have four colors for Leyline Binding, and when I get my planes, I'll have the fifth. Oko, huh? Mm, okay. Make a food. I get to Firebolt to finish it off if I want. Let's see what I reveal. A Mox would be insane. Oh, 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 oh. Land, mountain. Let's put another counter on <clears throat> Boberto there. Attack Oko, attack him. And he's probably not thrilled that I'm attacking him for two or him for one because that obviously sets that up. And then my deck, my deck's a funny one. It's going to look really funny <laughs> as we play these thing games out. And boom, there we go. A pretty easy game. All right, we saw blue, green, red lands, and an Oko. That doesn't really make me want to put Rotting Regisaur or Triumph of St. Catherine into my deck. I don't think I want Spell Queller either. We'll see how things go. 
But I think Spell Queller is not necessary. <laughs> uh, any land <clears throat> really gets this going here. All right. What are you going to do? Not not keep this hand? Plains, Swamp, or Mountain all make this hand pretty good. And most of my lands produce multiples of those colors. Turn one Inspiring Vantage Raghavan. Okay. Plains, Plains, Plains. Black, White Land, Black, White Land, Black, White Land. Uh, not quite. Uh, punished for my greed. Let's see. Raghavan hits and... It's a god. The god. The shrine. Ah, oh, that would have been it. If I had gone turn one tithe taker there, it would have been so sick. Oh wow. Oh well. Never mind. <laughs> the, I mean, I guess the the tithe taker would have uh, got me there. All right. Well, concealed courtyard helps. Guess I will still play the tithe taker. Oops. Didn't tap this for white. All right. Well. Oh, really needed to hit that on turn one, so maybe he wouldn't he wouldn't have been able to turn two the chariot here. Though I guess he would have turned three it. Oh wow. Okay, never mind. I'm I'm just getting getting rinsed here. And let's block Ragavan, of course. Take eight, and then I'm gonna concede on my turn. Well, some close games here. <laughs> Going to game three. And yeah, red green beats. I guess I do want triumph now that I've seen more. Triumph in. Pick your poison. Yeah, it's got soul ring. I think I should have pick your poison in the deck. What do I want to take out a crow and war? I would assume is good. Probe I could probably cut. I think that probe seems like a fine cut. I could have maybe put the regisaur in, but I don't know about that. All right, any moxin? I think I keep this hand. Look, I have turn two Leyline Binding because I have black, white, red, blue. And then I can go turn three Gut and Gut a Crone War is a really strong... Like, even if I could just Gut go, if he plays a good creature and I go a Crone War, attack with Gut, sack your creature. That is pretty great. And if I draw a two drop, this hand becomes extremely strong. So let's just do Godless Shrine go. Hopefully he doesn't have a turn one play. Also, if he has turn one soul ring, I can just blast it with arcane or leyline binding. All right, no turn one play. Two drop. No. Um, I'm just going to do this because I want to be able to cast leyline binding. And I don't think marsh flats is, gets me there. For whatever he plays. Oh, he didn't play anything. Okay. That's fine with me too. Need to draw not land. Not land here, please. Because if I... I would really like to play a not gut creature first. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just have to play the gut, I think. If he has a counter or if he has a removal spell, that is unfortunate. Okay, no removal. <clears throat> Hopefully he doesn't play Oko this turn. Hopefully he just plays a creature I can steal. No, he's killing my gut. Yeah. Now I'm just going to flood out. Okay, I guess Dark Confidant is a start. Okay, if Bob lives, I don't hate this position. He's, I hope he doesn't play Chariot this turn. Garrick Wildspeaker, okay. Make a beast. Just make a beast. No, he's untapping the lands. Uh, Flame Slash. Okay, now it's the time to draw one of my <clears throat> one of my fives here. Let's go Leyline Binding the Garrick. Five drop. <laughs> Well, let's sack Silent Clearing. Okay, I guess Rada's Firebrand is okay. Need to draw some action. He only has three cards in hand, <clears throat> but I only have one card in hand. Maybe if he plays Bonehorde Dracosaur this turn and I kind of crow and war it, and then this can attack for five, which is nice. Minsk and Boo. Oh, okay. Um, This actually isn't so bad, because... Rada's Firebrand is kind of nice here. Because right now, it, he can't sack Minsk and Boo to kill the Rada's Firebrand. Because if he does, that is not going to work out well. I guess he just attacks me for four, and then I attack <clears throat> Minsk and Boo for five. Because he can't, he can't leave it back either. 
Yeah, I'll take it. All right, I mean, that could be worse if that's his best play here. Oh, and Sarah Paragon's really nice. So let's go pump this. Okay, Rada's Firebrand attacks Minsk and Boo. Yeah, you can't block. <laughs> and then I think do I, I think I just play Sarah Paragon here. Give him an opportunity to kill the Paragon, which I don't love, but I kind of want to save the Akronor for something a little better. Like if he has Bone Horde Draxor, Pyrokinesis. All right, well, I guess I have to play the Akronor now. Mox Diamond, no good. All right, it would have worked out a lot better to do this, but you know what? What can you do? Okay, send. Need to draw. Need to draw something good here. Now he has the Bone Horn Dracosaur. I've already used my good removal, my good big stuff removal. <laughs> it's kind of sick that he just a crow and ore. All right, well, it's kind of sick that I drew the the path. So I get to hit for nine. He has no cards in hand. All right, all right. Rada's firebrand is really giving them the business. Got to I got to get, give a shout out to Chris Wolf. He he kept he kept saying I should add this card, and I kept you know <clears throat> resisting. And you know it's been great. And then halfling can't attack. All right, he goes to four. He's actually dead here unless he draws something. Draw, peeling that path was, was was awesome. Obviously, if I had gone, gotten to a crow in war, the, the Bone Horde Draxor, that would have been easy, but... Okay, Sack Fiery Island, and that's a start. He needs to play... He, he needs to kill Rada's Firebland or have, like, a five-power creature. Oh, no, I guess that's not true. Any other creature could let him block because I can make Minsk and Boo unable to block, but... Or rather, Boo... But uh, I can't make two things unable to block. Noise Marine. What did he cascade into? Grim Lava Mancer? Okay. Okay, I go to seven. I go to six. This is... Now I need to draw. Oh, Noise Marine, that was a good draw. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I think I'm one short. Well... But I'm not dead. The funny thing is, the turn I went Sarah Paragon Pump Firebrand, there was no way to do it where I could play the land out of my graveyard, unfortunately. Okay, so I pump this to a 5-3. Firebolt the Noise Marine. Yeah, if Mox Diamond was a land, I would win right now. Attack. This can't... Oh, I'm so stupid. Why didn't I just firebolt him twice? I'm, I just got so caught up in removing his blockers. I'm an idiot. I'm just sitting here like talking about all these things, I, these plays I can make, and I could have just firebolted him twice. Well, that was about the worst throw you'll see that today, I hope. And, uh, ouch. All right, Oof. time for round two. I, I, that was just, that might have been the worst mistake I've made on this channel. I mean, the other one that sticks out against me was against Carl, not Stefan, actually. To, the, those are on the same team. They were both on Handshake when I uh, had the initiative and just could have gone to trap and just killed him. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I guess I'll keep this hand. Carl's or uh, Stefan's deck here is, is nice. He's got Lotus and Mana Crypt, so <laughs> this is going to be tough. He's like Red Black Reanimator with like a Tali and Sneak Attack and stuff. We got swept 0 4, so this this might be a fast draft. Um, oh, I drew a Mox. That's absurd because now I can go land Mox Pass and I can Marsh Flats for Sacred Foundry and then Samwise back the Marsh Flats and then turn two, play Gut and Attack. Okay, okay. Maybe things are looking up. Rally time? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. And, I mean, he Imperial Sealed, so, like, with the, with Lotus Mana Crypt in his deck, so I'm not feeling great about this. Like, it'd be so easy for him to go land Lotus, Sack for Red, play Sneak, Red Floating, Sneak, Atali, and then I would just 
probably be dead. We shall see. I mean, you set something up. I guess it looks maybe like I've got a counterspell up, but Sam played against me round one and didn't really look like a counterspell deck, so. Well, all right, there's the Lotus, yeah. Okay, there's Chandra. Oh, that's not so bad. Riding mana, that's less good. To season Pyro, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't like it, but I guess here we are. Sacred Foundry, Pale of Life, Samwise. Get back the Marsh Flats. I'm the Ring Bearer. Mm, Firebolt isn't bad. What do I do here? So I could play Gut and both attack Chandra. These double block Gut. Yeah, that, that's probably... I'm going to have to sack the Mox, which is kind of a bummer with Lothari in hand. But I think that uh, I think this is going to be my best shot. And I assume they double block the Menace creature. Or I could just put Elemental on Samwise. Chandra goes to one, but then I get to Firebolt Chandra next turn. And this way, he gets to, if he wants, he can minus Chandra to kill Gut, but then the, the Chandra is, is, is gone. So, okay, he's going to get mana. I mean, he only drew two cards, so let's hope that this isn't... Oh, oh brother. Well... This actually is still not too bad. Firebolt the Chandra. Play Godless Shrine. Pass the turn. And then now, if he doesn't have something to play, I get to go Undermount Adventure into Athari, which is pretty awesome. So let's go Undermount Adventure. And I guess get red. Sure, I don't need black and I've got plenty of white. Whatever, it's kind of all. All the same. Now now he's in a lot of trouble. Like he has to have a good play this turn or, or we're gonna be getting in there. Really hope me throwing that match doesn't cost us, but given that we started 04, it's gonna be tough for it not to. We'll see. I'm gonna do my best to win my next two. That'll be the plan. What are we animating here? Oh, season pyro, your hand must be pretty bad. Okay, that does give him probably uh two two more creatures. There's no way he didn't have creatures. All right, he can take my Tithe Taker. Don't care so much about that. I'm just going to go to Forge here. Never forge it. Ooh, pick your poison. Oh, all right, let's go Othari. Send. And probably not casting pick your poison this turn is my guess, because I would have to tap to Undermount Adventure. Okay, take five. He can steal the initiative, but I will take it right back here. It's gonna, it goes to get a land. Let's. I think I block the Season Pyro here. Put Season Pyro in his graveyard to to use the ability, but like, I think I'd rather kill a one-two. Also. This way, if he plays Sneak Attack, I can just pick your Poison Enchantment, which is nice. Okay, okay, up a game here. And playing against Black Red Reanimator, Splashing Flash. I mean, Dress Down is actually pretty nice here. Um, and I wouldn't want an Island in the deck, but if I put in Dress Down, I might want maybe in Spell Queller. I could put in those four. What do I want to cut? Pick your poison, I think, is still good. He has a lot of artifacts I can I can get. Crow and War seems like it's great. Steel Seraph seems just okay. And I don't think that he has very many wasteland lands. Let's put in the archive, spell queller, Lorien Revealed, Dress Down, and I can take out another land as well. Maybe I take out a planes because I put in a white source. Yeah. Do you want Triumph of St. Catherine? He seems like he kind of goes over the top of that. I think Dress Down is going to be really good, actually. And Tithe Taker? No, Intrepid Adversary maybe is the other, the other cut. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if this works. All right. Any Moxen. Moxen will be the key to victory here. I mean, he did have turn two Lotus, Chandra, Pyromancer, and 
Gut did a pretty good job of battling back against it, honestly. Traded kind of right away for the Pyromancer and the token. Traded on Mox for a Pyromancer and the token, nonetheless. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll keep this hand. Raucous Theater. Dope Mill something gigantic. Turn one. I guess I'll play Jetmere's Gardens. Um, actually, I might get the Meticulous Archive. Yeah, that sounds actually reasonable. Because then I can go Sacred Foundry on two and play Glimmerlands. I don't think I even really want to play Carnage Interpreter on three here. Bank Buster. Oh, can I get a Pick Your Poison? I think I'd rather Meticulous Archive over Raugrin Trium. Lorien Revealed. I'll put that in my graveyard. That one I don't need. <laughs> Draw. Oh, Dark Confidant. All right. I like that. If he's going to spend time on Reckoner Bank Buster, I want to get Dark Confidant into play ASAP. And then next turn I can go Glimmer Lens plus Jetmere's Garden. I don't really like that I drew both Dress Down and Carnage Interpreter in the opener. Because I would like to be able to... It's kind of hard to utilize both of them. Hmm. Well, wow, Season Pyro is probably going to make at least one token. Yeah, I made two. And now he can crew Bank Buster and Smash. Uh, this is going to be tough. I think, I think I'm think i a little dead here. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what Dark Confidant reveals. Path to Exile and Firebolt. Okay, those aren't, those aren't terrible. It's Firebolt, the Season Pyro. Play Glimmer Lens here. Past the turn. Well, he can't crew a bank buster currently. If he go if he ends up being able to plays a creature first. I guess I could just double block. Because I kind of like just trading cards off when I have Carnage Interpreter coming. And then maybe I go Jetmere's Gardens Go to leave up Dress Down. Oh, this isn't good. Whatever's going on here is bad. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Oh, and Mana Crypt? Yikes, okay. No damage yet, huh? Do I, want to play? I don't really want to play Carnage Interpreter with this many cards in hand. I think I'm going to just play Jetmere's Garden past the turn. And I have Dress Down and Path to Exile up. And really don't think I have a winnable position from here realistically, but... I mean, I guess I'll, I will continue to try. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to attack. And Season Pyro, pretty good here. And even gets to draw a card off Bank Buster. It's just like, we're, we're just behind on card, behind on mana, behind on life. In fact, so behind, I would prefer not to show him Dress Down if I can avoid it. Funnily enough, I could go end of turn Dress Down on your end step. I wouldn't flip to Bob. Let's see. Kozilek Butcher of Truth. All right, I guess that's not getting cast. <laughs> uh, and then I could play Carnage Interpreter. It wouldn't trigger because of Dress Down. But I'd just be playing a 3 3. I don't know. That's kind of funny. I mean, if I go like play something big, maybe I could path it or something. All right, I'll take it, go to six here. That's it. No plays. Hmm. I don't know what's going on here. Gut and Spell Queller. Now I'm just going to play Gut here. Go after Chandra. I'm going to attack Chandra with Bob. And then I'm going to sack Glimmer Lens and just attack stuff on here. I, I'm going for the dub. I'll leave a Bob in play. I, I, I don't think I could win this game, so I think I'm going to try to... Or rather, I need to take risks to win this game, and leaving Bob in play when I'm at three is part of those risks. Mm -hmm. well, let's see if this works. If he just has all lands somehow, but then also didn't sack Sunbake Canyon, I, uh, yeah, I guess I don't really know. 
No. Oh, he's not sacking it? Oh, he's paying five mana. Oh, he's doing that. Season Pyro. All right. I mean, here's how here's how I win this game. For uh, involved a mana crypt flip ideally, but duress. Okay, I got a path. One of the tokens. I mean, we're not at zero here. He gets to dress. He gets to see dress down. It's fine. I don't I don't love it, but it's it's okay. Is this a through the breach or something or a sneak attack? Oh, well, then I'm dead. But I was going to hope he didn't have anything, and the next one I could attack with two, uh, two skeletons. All right. Going to game three here. Triumph, Triumph actually seems like maybe it'll be good. Maybe this Bob is... Yeah, maybe I'll just take the Bob out, because I put in Lorien Revealed, too. It's kind of out of control how many <laughs> things. All right. Let's do it. Let's get in there. All right, on the play, let's go Moxon. Oh, this actually works fine. Uh, so I think I go Sacred Foundry, Pay Two Life, Cycle Lorien Revealed for probably Meticulous Archive, because I don't really want to draw it, though it does take a Surveil Land out, and then go Mox, discarding that land to play Figure of Destiny. And then hopefully draw an untapped land for Spell Caller, but I can also just play Tithe Taker. There's also a chance, depending on what I see, that I want to go pump figure, play Tithe Taker on two, assuming I draw a land. But I think I'd rather have Sacred Foundry in play than discard the Sacred Foundry. Uh, oh, I'll just I'll just get Raugrin Trium. Mox, discard Raugrin Trium, play figure of destiny. And then Hope for some lands, and hope he doesn't have a Lotus or Mana Crypt at all. Oh, kept a card on top. I don't like that. Marsh Flats, all right. I'll just send, um, actually, let's see, I'm gonna attack. I could regret this, but I think I'm gonna pump this and play, and play Tithe Taker. I feel like Spell Queller is not enough to finish this I need, I need, I'm going to need a little bit more here, and I think I just get planes, honestly. Because I'm just going to play Tithe Taker and pass. I just don't think passing with an obvious Spell Queller up is the way I'm going to win this game. And if, hopefully turn two, he doesn't go Lotus Mana Crypt, blah, 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 blah. If he does, he does. I, I don't like it, but... Now what I can do is I'll, I'll pass with four power in play, Spell Queller up, and the ability to... Oh, wow. Nice. And the ability to pump figure. Does he have Lotus to go with this? If he does, he's not playing it. Okay. Concealed Courtyard. Nice. Send. And I'll just keep Firebolt in hand. I don't think there's a big reason to play it. Pass Mana Crypt. Okay. I could spell color that. I know I can. Well, I'm glad I didn't, I guess, because I don't really know what I'm supposed to do with that. <laughs> yep, you got Mana Crypt and Lotus. I mean, if you had a normal just like turn four play, I would be fine. Oh, that we can spell color. Let's hope this works. If he's got a way to kill, if he has Brotherhood's End, this is going to be brutal. <laughs> but again, what can I do about that? The answer is nothing. Mm, nope, no plays. Okay. Oh, let's do the Elite Spellbinder for sure. Flash, Ashen Rider, Kozilek. Why don't I just take Ashen Rider? And then Flash doesn't do anything, and Kozilek doesn't do anything. And then I hit you down to six, Mana Crypt, lost the flip. One and one, baby. Could have been two and oh, but you know what? We'll take the one and one. All right, time for round three, playing against Nathan on Lutri here. Lutrizzle. Yeah, but he he's just, I'm just going to kill him with turn two gut. 
Turn one, land mox, tithe taker. Turn two, gut, attack. Uh, no, but I'm not mulling this hand. Turn one, figure of destiny. Turn two, wasteland, mox, emerald, gut. How would you, why would you mull that? <laughs> mox diamond would also be okay, because then I could just play a turn two bob, though obviously it'd be better just to have a, a black land. Okay, turn one, figurino. It's on like Grixis with Oracle Demonic Consultation. He's got Burst Lightning, which is kind of unfortunate. Mox Ruby. He has Mox Ruby and Mox Jet. Jeez, all right. Okay, well, Silent Clearing is actually pretty nice. So let's send... I mean, this is pretty good because... Even if he has a counter and or removal spell, he deals with Dark Confidant, but then I have Gut on three with a figure to attack and trigger it. So that's not bad. If he doesn't have one of those cards here, then I think I'm in amazingly good shape. I feel like he's going to have one, one such thing. Oh, stomp the figure. Daze the Dark Confidant. Okay. Yeah, he's got that. That's fine. <laughs> into Mox Bone Crusher. Uh, oh, into Narset. Can he at least miss on Narset? No? Yeah, okay, he did, he did. Let's go Swamp into Gut. And now what I really need to find is a creature or artifact that I can sacrifice. He has Force of Will. <laughs> okay. Uh, pitching Snappy. Yeah, I mean, he dealt with all my stuff. Let's see. Oh, he hit force off of the, the Narset. I, I missed that. Well, I would have cast the gut anyway. What I'm, I'm going to do not cast the gut. He had one card in his hand. <laughs> and now I can't cast uh, Sarah Paragon. I can't sack Silent Clearing because, there, A, there's a Narset in play. But even, even on my turn, I don't want to do that. I think I've got to path this thing. It's, like, really painful, but... I'm going to take so much damage from that thing if I don't path it. What am I going to do? He's going to go get a swamp now. And you can put Lutri in hand at the very least. Oh, third path. Okay. Mm. Leyline binding. Let's get the third path out of here. Pass the turn. If I draw planes, I can go Paragon into Bob. Now we could put Lutri in hand. All right. White Source is actually really good here. Yep. <laughs> Something about chickens coming home to roost. <laughs> Relic of Sauron. Oh, that's no good. That is going to be tough. Okay, I think my my window of opportunity here is closing dramatically soon. Inti, okay, I guess I can steal that. That's not the worst. Hmm. I think it's better to play Elite Spellbinder. Though, I don't feel very good about any of it. What you, what you got in that bag? Is it a Lutri? No, it looks like just killing the Elite Spellbinder with the Braid. And then, all right, we're, we're super dead here. Okay, I'm gonna take out my Wasteland again. I'll just put a Plains in. I don't, I don't think I want, actually, maybe I want Dress Down Spell Queller, this, this package again. Spellcaller seems actually pretty good against him, and so does Dress Down. Steel Seraph still seem kind of bad. Firebolt's fine. Picker Poise definitely fine. Wasteland. I took out Wasteland. I guess I'll just take the planes out again, as well as the other planes. And I'm gonna take the Acroan War out. This does not seem like an Acroan War matchup. Yeah. All right. Let's battle. 
on the play here. Hoping for a, a nice one. I mean, I had a pretty pretty good one last game. Figure into Dark Confidant into Gut is a great start. It just happened he had Mox, Mox, Daze, Stomp, Force of Will. He just had a bunch of busted cards. Like, I, I, I feel like we're a little outclassed this draft, though. Again, I, I could be 2-0 right now. Easy as pie. Just point the burn spell at the opponent's face. Yeah, I mean, I gotta keep this. At least I have a Meticulous Archive I can go scry with. Turn 3... Battle Rager on the play just is good. And if I can scry into a two or actually even better, a three drop, then we, we got we got a shot here. Okay. Of course he has a mox, because he has mox jet and mox ruby. What is it like? Alright, I'm actually gonna keep this on top, but I'm not gonna play it on turn two. Mm hmm. I'm just going to play a land, go. Carnage Interpreter, I think it's good enough as a follow-up that I should do it, even though uh, obviously I, I'm not able to play it quite yet. Let's go Concealed Courtyard, Mox, Vicious Battle Rager, and then now next turn, once this gets countered, obviously. Yep, he's going to daze me. I assume. And then Next turn, uh, I'll get to... Oh, he floated the mana, so... What do we cast in here? A, we run a Psycho or Fiend's Tower that badly, huh? To go back a land drop? Hmm? All right, fair enough. Inti, sure. All right, it's Carnage time. Oh! If I play a Swamp, I'll be able to do both. Leyline Binding and Carnage. I like that. Binding your Inti, and then play some Carnage here. Okay, no Force of Will. Well, let's go. We've got a 5-5 five, five Menace and a bunch of clues to crack, and I have all five colors of land in play. Yeah, scry land or a tap surveil land, sure. It doesn't stop my Carnage Interpreter. Put Lutri into hand, yeah. All aboard. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's really nice, because now I can send for five. Hope he doesn't have force here. But he didn't last turn. And then I'm just going to play... I don't think I want to play Silent Clearing. I think I'd rather play Marsh Flats. And the reason is... I have so many clues to crack, I feel like I'd rather not get the land that costs me life every time I use it. Okay. Let's get... Don't really need Bayou. I don't really want to pay the life, because I've got red, blue, white. I've got... Definitely got green. I guess I'll just get planes. That's fine. And then I'll crack a clue here. Don't really know what he's up to. But I'm going to play Dark Confidant first so I don't have cards in hand, and I'll play the Silent Clearing. Okay, and send with these. And probably ship the turn after that. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what's going on here. Is this, if this was Burst Lightning... You probably wanted to kill a Paragon before I played a land out of my graveyard that draws me a card. I think that's the case, but all right. Hmm. It's kind of odd. It just didn't, would have denied me a card. Well, I guess the Paragon dies. Maybe hoping that I attacked with not Menace. That would be odd. And... I think I'm going to crack a clue here because, yeah, that's the risk. The risk is if I drew, if I draw all lands in a row, the Carnage Interpreter, oh, Bob goes down, gets a little worse, but I need to, 
I feel like not doing anything doesn't make sense. What I probably will refrain from doing is cracking a clue end of turn. Because I need to draw a not land here. Hmm, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that actually doesn't do it. So let's just crack a clue. Not land? Okay, that's not a land at all. And then play Othari. And if he has a counterspell, he's a counterspell. He has three cards in hand, sure. Okay, or hard casting force. What can you do? Oh, Mystic Confluence. Jeez, that's even worse. And then pass the turn. Probably going to lose this now. <laughs> I would imagine. This comes the third path iconoclast of Stomp Me? Wait, if his play is Stomp into just cast... Oh, that's not so bad. Okay. I need to draw a spell I can cast here. Because the dress down's kind of stuck in my hand. Like, I am going to be able to play it and cycle it at some point, but I, it doesn't work with Carnage Interpreter because I can play it, and then I, first of all, I drop the two, but second, it also just takes off the Carnage Interpreter ability. And I don't want this to trade for those. Or rather, I don't want to trade for one of those. I'm fine trading for both. All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to go the other direction. We're just going to cast Lorien Reveal. <laughs> uh, hey, if he counters it, I can just play my land and then my interpreter is, is great. All right, pay the life. Radha's Firebrand? What do you think about this? And then I'll play Glimmer Lens. And then next turn I'll play Intrepid Adversary for a bunch. <laughs> Uh, okay, I mean, I'm still at a pretty high life total, so I really don't mind what's going on here. Pass the turn. Feels like this isn't going too badly. Obviously, things could change very quickly here. He has Oracle Consult, so if he ever draws those, I'm just dead. Unless I have Dress Down Up, which is why I cited it in. So I guess it's just being a little awkward with the Carnage Interpreter, though it's not that bad because, yes, I could have clocked for some damage last, last turn and that would have been nice. This turn I would have just traded for those two, which is kind of the case, you know, that's just not that great of a deal, especially since the Firebrand is going to do some pretty good work here if he, if he lets it happen. <laughs> I can bring back Othari as well. I'm just going to play Rag and try him. I need mana here. Let's play this. Let's see what he thinks. All right, I will play once. I could play twice. Yeah, I'll play twice. And. I'm going to go to attacks here and see what happens. Demonic Consultation. Wow. Okay. This is exciting. So he's going to name a card, exile the top six cards, then exile cards until he hits it. Okay. What did he name? Snapcaster Mage. Okay. And what did he exile? Did he exile the Thassa's Oracle? Yes, he did. That's a good one to know. Okay, and so he's going to snap caster mage. Oh, let me attack first. That would be awesome. Don't think he's going to. Let's see. So he's going to snap caster mage mystic confluence. If I cast dress down, all my things lose abilities, including all that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm still just, I'm still going to do this because I think this works out better. Oh, he wasn't dead here. Not at all. I don't even think I could attack. This would be a 3-3. Three, three. This would be a 3-1 because this ability would stop. So that that's actually pretty big. All right, maybe we gave him back. And now on to game three. Like, I just want to figure it out. So this would be a 3-3. Three, three. This would be a 3-1. This would be a 2-2. Two, two. This would have no ability. Couldn't attack. I just wouldn't attack here. 
Because you'd have a 2-1, a 3-2, and a 4-3. Yeah. All right. Well, we, we take those anyway. Uh, still didn't really want Wasteland. He had the Artifact Land and a bunch of basics. I don't want Re Regisaur. I don't think I want Triumph of St. Catherine. Seems kind of clunky. Stainless Seal Seraph. All right. I'm ready to roll here. I'm on the draw. Carnage Interpreter did some work, too. Okay. Let's go. Game three. This is be the time for Mox Diamond and Mox Emerald to show up. I, I drew Mox Emerald in game two. Didn't draw it in game one. Um, yeah, I will keep this hand. He just has such a grindy deck that I really don't want to end up in a spot where I mulligan a hand that in, into something that... Uh, oh, I'll keep that. I just go to six, and then he just trades one for one a bunch. All right, play some. No, don't play third path. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Uh, this is horrible, but what am I going to do? I just can't. Uh, I can't let him get a bunch of tokens. It's just going to make my... Initiative plan not work. It's going to make gut a lot worse. Like two tokens blocking a, a skeleton is pretty bad for me. Okay. Island cycle this. Get a steam vents. And let's elite spellbinder here. Before he hits five for mystic confluence. I mean, he might just daze it and that would be annoying. But this could also... Give me a little idea of what he's working with. Okay. I'm just going to burst lightning it. Or stomp it, I guess. You don't really need to do it in response. because. Oh, yes. Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation doesn't have double blue. Oof. Okay. Well. Just having those two cards in his hand makes it really hard for me to imagine winning. But I guess. Sure. Any blue and I just die. So that doesn't even help. Guess I'll take the Larcenist. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He could consult for like Mox Jet or something to try to win next turn with Snapcaster, but he still would need to draw blue then. And if he misses, casting consult to just draw the card like he did last game can definitely have some drawbacks. All right, well. I guess I'm dead. <laughs> His mountains are getting me. That that path was costly. All right. And that's... Here, I'll just show you. Just so you see the... See it go off. Thoth is Oracle. Let Oracle resolve. Cast Demonic Consultation. Name... Sarpedian Emperor Empires Volume 7. Okay, I'm actually curious. What is Nathan going to name? Does he have some swagger? He names A Good Day to Pie. There we go. I like it. <laughs> and ba-boom. And then that's it. The nice turn four. And that makes me one and two. All right, so I've got some good news and some bad news. Really, it's not any good news. We got trounced eight to three. The only thing that helps, you know, solve a little is that my Firebolt misplay, my, in, well, misplay, incredible punt of not Firebolting my opponent when they're at four life and I could just cast it twice, we would have lost the draft anyway. So, it didn't actually cost my team. That That is nice. I don't like when I cost my team. That luckily did not. I thought this deck was actually pretty sweet. Uh, the bad news, of course, is that we lost, you know, horribly. Uh, I don't know, double mocks, Carnage Interpreter, Gut, some initiative things. Imagine if I had the Verdant, my mana would have been perfect. But honestly, I didn't even really have severe mana issues. Like, maybe I stumbled here and there. There was the one game where I couldn't play Paragon against Nathan, but I don't know if I'm winning that game anyway. And this deck was really fun. So, punts aside, it was pretty cool and had a cool sideboard plan, which I thought was actually pretty decent. So, interesting deck, and uh, I look forward to playing with these more. Again, Rada's Firebrand did some good work. Though it did distract me from that Firebolt. It tricked me, you see. That'll do it for today. Uh, you know, you don't always draft decks like this, but uh, when you do, you try not to firebolt your opponent, I guess. <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I certainly hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.